Hello, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today I'm going to present you the Canon PowerShot SX70HS. Let's start. First of all, thank you to photosura.photosura.com for lending me the camera so I could try it and I'm going to, you, to, to tell you my uh, thoughts about it. Please, I will appreciate if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Eric Gibo. There is a small subscribe button and a bell so you get uh, notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. And if you have any question, you can leave me a comment below or send me an email to info at ericgibo.com. So uh, in the past months and years, I've made uh, reviews of several bridge camera. This is a bridge camera. Uh, I've put the link, uh, I put the link there, the Panasonic uh, FZ300, Lumix FZ300, the Nikon P900, the Nikon P1000, the Sony H, I don't know what, 400X or X, mm, no, I can't remember which one it is, the link is there, so if you want to, do, to have a look at it, to compare. So today we're going to speak about this Canon, the SX70HS. This is a bridge camera. Uh, for people who don't know, I remind that uh, a bridge camera has a lens that you cannot uh, take off. They are known to have powerful uh, zoom lens. So, uh, what uh, uh, technical uh, specs can I give you? Oh, there's a small cord as you can see, so you don't lose the, 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 cam the lens cap. So, the zoom is uh, 65 uh, time. Uh, I repeat again, I've said it in many videos, it doesn't mean anything. Like if uh, zoom says 10 times, it starts from 10, 10 times goes up to 100. But if it starts at 100, it goes up to 1000. So uh, what's important is actually uh, what's the real uh, focal length. This goes from 21 to uh, 1365 millimeter, and this is great because many uh, bridge camera, they start at 24 millimeter and go up to 600, 1200, 3000, but uh, 24 is not that super wide angle. So it is great to have something that starts at 21. The resolution is 20.3 million pixels. The lens aperture starts at 3.5 at maximum uh, 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 focal length, I mean at uh, widest uh, angle and goes up to uh, 6.5. So if I compare to the Lumix FZ300 that, that has a, 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 a 2.8 on the full length from 24 up to 600 millimeter, uh, this is less luminous. Very important, it does a raw file format and many bridge camera have uh, this problem, they don't do a raw and this is uh, a pity because when you want to uh, edit your picture uh, then you don't get uh, all the possibility if you, it's just JPEG. It's better to have RAW. So uh, uh, Nikon P900 did not have RAW and the P1000 has. Uh, the Lumix FZ300 has RAW. Uh, the Sony, uh, told before, doesn't support RAW files. And this one does. So I think this is a good point. It does 4K uh, at 25 uh, image per second. So uh, if you want to do slow motion uh, you cannot have, you cannot do it in 4k uh, but well, it has 4k uh, i think this way the fz300 has better uh, video feature in this way it does a uh, 10 uh, frame per second uh, burst uh, picture so uh, that's not bad if you want to do action picture that's nice very important i think this is great many people want uh, a basic camera this is not basic by the way uh, there are more ba uh, many more basic uh, reflex camera and uh, actually when I did the test of this camera I did it along the Canon 2000D uh, also known as Revolt T7 I'll put the review in a few days and uh, these are better feature or more things than this uh, reflex camera the, the 2000D okay so uh, there's one thing people ask is I want a camera to start vlogging and I want it for everything, for making picture, video, and also vlogging. And I always say the same thing. What's very important is the sound. Uh, even with uh, pro material, sometimes sound is a real problem for me and for many people, no? So 
it's important to have a microphone connector or a separate recorder. If you're on a tight budget, you probably cannot afford a, a separate recorder or do not have time to synchronize sound. I recommend you have a camera with a microphone connector and this one has it. As you can see, you have a connector here. Maybe you hear there's a plane uh, passing by, okay? The processor they've put in there is the, the Digic 8, which is also used on a uh, top-end uh, Canon camera. So they've put, they've put a good processor that goes fast, it's nice. There is also a digital zoom. It means that I tested the optical one that goes to, uh, which is a 65, but actually with a digital can go up to 260. Obviously this is uh, interpolated and it's not real, it's not optical, so the quality will never be the same. I did not actually, uh, I don't publish tests on that, I, I, I did uh, normal optical zoom, okay? Autofocus. Uh, it has a quite good autofocus, I'll speak about it in a second, but you can also do manual focusing. But for manual, you have to play with these two arrows. It makes a zoom on the picture and you, then you can do some precise, uh, precise um, focusing. Mm, I don't think it's practical. Uh, it would be a lot nicer to have a button directly on the, on the, on the lens barrel. You know? I, don't like, I don't really like this for manual focusing, but the option is there. Here you have, well, the screen is fully articulated, as you can see. Okay, it's not touchable. I mean, you touch it, doesn't, doesn't happen anything. And here below, here, you have the, uh, if you need the correction because you have uh, glasses and when you don't wear them, you want to have the correction, it's just below. Very often, normally it's on the side. So if you don't find it, it's just below the, the viewfinder here, the small slider, okay? Good news, they've put a real charger. Uh, lately, uh, bridge camera and compact camera, you don't have to plug a USB cable in the camera. And I think if you have two batteries, it's a problem because you want to go around and leave one of the battery at home charging and you cannot. It has to be in the camera or uh, you need to buy a separate uh, charger. And uh, Canon has a separate charger, so you don't have to bother with that. What can you do with that? You can do macro uh, also, but I think macro photography here is more like proxy photography. You cannot get that close. I've put a picture here and uh, it's, not, it's not that close. So it's more like proxy, okay? But it's, you cannot have everything in a, in, in a camera. Oh, obviously, if you cannot change your lens, you, you're more limited, okay? But you're more limited, but you have some more budgeted possibility, you know? So, so it's, or you spend money, a lot of money, or you spend less money, you have different features. So everything is not perfect, I mean, but uh, that's great. So you can do some uh, macro or proxy. ISO. ISO is the, is the point that many people worry about when we speak about beach, bridge camera. Uh, is it good? Uh, is it really noisy? Well, this camera goes from, uh, 20, uh, from 100 to 6400 ISO. Honestly, I'm putting you some picture and video right now. From 800 ISO, it starts to be really noisy. Uh, they do work on the picture. You can see uh, they take off the noise and it makes it, you lose a lot of detail. On video, it becomes really grainy. So I think this camera should not be used uh, over uh, 800 ISO. It goes up to 6400, uh, but I don't think you should use it uh, over that. Uh, as you can see now, I'm going to focus on a, on a, on a night uh, light, street light, and uh, you can see I can get very close and uh, it works okay. Okay, it works. Uh, so now we're going back to the autofocus. Uh, for photography, you will have no problem because you just uh, press halfway the, the, the trigger and uh, if it doesn't focus straight away, bah, it will again. You know, it's like, if you're not in a rush, uh, that's okay. But when you're doing video, right now I'm, I'm, I'm following some plane. Sometimes I lose, uh, I lose the, the, the focus, and I'll put a video when I go from 21 millimeter up to up to 1,365, uh, pointing at uh, the Teide volcano here in Tenerife, uh, and there is a moment where I lose the focus. 
So if you make a picture, it's not a problem. But if you make a video, this is a real problem because uh, if halfway you're traveling, uh, zoom travel, traveling, uh, you lose the focusing, then uh, the take is not valid. You have to reshoot again. So that may be a problem. It all depends on the kind of picture you're doing uh, or video you're making. If you need to do uh, long follows and things like this, you may have some, some problem with this camera. It works a lot better than the Nikon P900, but uh, I think the Sony uh, I reviewed and the, the Lumix FZ300 were a lot better at time of focusing, a lot, a lot, lot better. So I think mm, this is something you should uh, you should take into account if you really want to do long video. If it's like vlogging like this, it's no problem. But if you're going to do uh, following uh, birds or plane or that may be a problem. Uh, the colors, as you can see, I show you some picture. Uh, they're nice. Uh, they're, they are a bit saturated, but I think they're nice. Uh, Nowadays, many people want saturated color, so I think they, they bet on that. But as you work on in raw, raw format, if you want, you can actually uh, post production. Uh, post, you can correct this in post production. Uh, this camera uh, has uh, many things automatic. Uh, you can do also panoramic pictures, and you have some scenes to have uh, different colors or whatever if you don't want to post process. But you can actually work fully manually if you want. Not only the autofocus by the focusing but also uh, the aperture the speed everything you can actually do manually so if you want a camera that works for many things and also learn about photography or to manually uh, use the camera you can actually do it so i think this is a great option uh, very often people ask me if it's better to have a bridge camera or a reflex camera and i always say the same thing uh, if you buy a reflex camera in a month time you tell me what is the best lens that do that do uh, that does everything uh, I said no why did you buy a reflex camera the point of having a, 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 a camera you can change lenses is to change lenses so you actually get different uh, option and always the best quality lens if you want depending on the work or the, the type of picture you want to do if you get a uh, uh, a camera and you want a universal lens it's better to get a bridge camera although it may be not as luminous all this but it will be easier the size is great i mean the size of this camera is ridiculously small compared to the p1000 but the p1000 has a zoom that goes up to 3000 millimeter if you look at it this is the maximum you get when you get the zoom out you know so it's quite Okay, the, the P1000 has this size when nothing is out at the minimum zoom, you know, so it's really nice. It doesn't weigh too much. Uh, it costs half the price of the P1000. So I think this camera is a very good option if you want to uh, travel or vlog or um, do videos or picture. It's a very good option. And uh, honestly, uh, People who want a reflex camera and they don't, they are not prepared to spend money on lenses. They should never buy a reflex camera. They should buy this or a compact camera with a powerful zoom or this. Uh, do I like this camera compared to other bridge I've tried? Would I recommend this one over the other one? Mm, yes and no. I would say if you were interested in the Sony I reviewed, then this one I think is better because you have raw files. Uh, microphone connector I think in this way it's better except if you want to do videos with the long traveling because then you may lose the autofocus on this one and not on the Sony if you want to do videos uh, like uh, higher speed slow motion all this then the Lumix FZ300 is probably better although at high ISO I think it's more noisy would I uh, recommend this over the P900 Nikon P900, yes, because the P900 for me is really a bad camera. This is my opinion. Some people say different, but my opinion is this. Would I recommend this over the P1000? I would say uh, if you need everything over 1300 uh, millimeter, if you really need it, then the 
P1000 is great. They've solved many autofocus problems. It has raw files. Uh, it, it's a great camera now. And uh, but it, quite, it costs twice this. So then, then the P1000 would be more interesting. But I think this one is new. It came out a few months ago. So uh, the Lumix FZ300 is already old. It's like four years old. And the sensor is the same as the FZ200, which is like six years old. So maybe I would prefer this one over uh, the Lumix, except if you need a uh, 2.8 aperture. My conclusion, I think this is a good camera and this is a camera you should take into account uh, at time of buying a bridge camera. I think this one is worth it. It's a, it's a good product. Well, that's it. Thank you uh, Photosuda for lending me the camera. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash my website erichibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave me a comment or send me an email to info at and my social network info are in the comment below. Thank you very much. Bye.